Hi guys, it occurred to me that it might be interesting to do a video asking you how you got to know of Iceberg Slim's books, how you came across him and what you thought when you were reading his life story. Uh, did you think it was credible? Were you not sure if it was fiction or a compilation of stories he had heard? Or did you just think it was 100% real autobiography? And so I'm going to get into that. But I'm also going to explain how someone who's, as you can tell, not from the United States, uh, got into Iceberg Slim at a time when his books were not published in the United Kingdom and how it became that I researched and published uh, the lost interviews of Iceberg Slim, book one and book two. Um, so hopefully that's going to be interesting to you. But below this video, please leave your comments on how you got to hear of Iceberg Slim and how you felt when you were reading his autobiography in particular, but also his other books like uh, Mama Black Widow and uh, Naked Soul, Trick Baby, by all means. So I was importing, in my mid to late teens, I started importing rap music from the United States because it wasn't available most of it was not available in the United Kingdom and me and my friends were paying quite extortionate prices to get hold of that kind of music and I took it upon myself to start importing and then I took it upon myself also to go to the United States and bring back some CDs you know we're talking like NWA, Slick Rick, Ice T and so many different artists that were hard to come across in the UK because it wasn't like nowadays where uh, music was released in the UK and the USA and the same was with books as well so although you could pop into almost any bookshop in the United States when I went and find Iceberg Slim he wasn't available anywhere in the United Kingdom so I took it upon myself as I say to go to the USA bring back uh, all these kind of CDs you know Ghetto Boys, Willie D, Slick Rick all of that stuff um, and Brother Lynch Hung all kinds of crazy stuff that, that would possibly sell um, even I, I found Lokes you know because we couldn't get Lokes and it was like a thing you know it's like a cool thing that the rappers had and so I brought some of those back as well and I was selling uh, in Hip Hop Connection like the major rap magazine in the UK uh, through advertisements in there also on a personal basis to people and in a shop as well so I had heard of Iceberg Slim from Ice-T and by listening to Ice-T I uh, got a very very uh, curious about Iceberg Slim and as many of you probably know his name his album The Iceberg and even the book uh, him is on the front cover of Home Invasion in the sketch there and, and Ice-T Ice is very uh, open about where he got his name and the fact that he admires uh, Iceberg Slim how he told the A and the B side he gave the, the good and the bad and the ugly uh, he didn't just try and come across as if it was something cool he went deep into his soul and he told you everything he didn't cut out anything so you got 360 degrees of his world and then you also got the perspective of an older man looking back at his life as well so I flew over to the state probably one of the first times um, that I was doing this with the CDs and I was staying in like a motel or something off Hollywood Boulevard LA and was searching in bookshops, record shops, came across the books for the first time, took the books home, had the, like the silver cover just with a sketch of his face on the cover and started reading Pimp, first book. Um, just on the, just on the recommendation basically of Ice-T, who I'd seen in interviews and things. And I was like blown away. I was like, this is really taking me into a different world this is really something special. And as I progressed through the book, it was so cool as well for me 
Of course, the atmosphere uh, was seeping through from the streets of LA. You know, I was getting that kind of feeling of, of how the United States is. Not was, but it still has a, an atmosphere that I could relate to being a foreigner and people having fun on the beach here. And so I started to think as I was reading the book, is this real? You know, and I was just curious how many of you guys uh, thought it was uh, quite incredible, incredible stroke unbelievable as you read it. And so, so I just started to think, well, there's no photo of this, this guy on the cover. Why is it just a sketch, not a photo? If he's a real person or is it just because he wants anonymity? And then I read the front page, which says, like the, the publisher's Holloway House's introduction, says this is a work of fiction. All the characters are fictional and everything. And then again, you know, you start to think, well, that could just be legal protection, just could be a standard preface they put in all their books, just to keep themselves out of trouble and the authors out of trouble. So, you know, part of reading the book, not only just the book, but the additional factor of, is this real? This is incredible. Did this really happen? Or maybe part of it happened to this guy, part of it are stories he's picked up on the street over the years of other individuals. So it's all real, but he's just kind of collected it into this one story and it's not all his life. Um, and then the other thing is that it's fiction, but it never really struck me that it could be fiction because it was just so detailed and so sincere, you know, there was the emotion and the detail was just, in, just didn't seem compatible with the theory that it could be fictional. So I was kind of split between these two theories or it was just like 100% stories collected by an incredible writer who then put them out as the life of this guy. Um, and like I said, I'd never seen a photo of him. All I had to go off was what Ice-T said and the Holloway House covers, which in those days, well, like I say, the silver edition, which uh, just had a, a sketch of his face on the front. Little did I know, um, after my first steps of actually importing the books from the USA and selling them in the UK, so I was like selling them in the UK before they were published in the UK years later. Um, so I basically allow people in the UK to access those books because there was no way you could get them from. And they sold pretty well um, to people who were familiar with rap, familiar with iced tea. So they, they sold pretty well. And uh, every time I went to the States, I'd bring some more back and sell them. And it got to the point, it was actually, uh, I was cleaning out the shelves of the bookstores and there weren't any more left. You know, I was searching far and wide. Um, and making a, a reasonable profit on selling them, even though I was paying my airfare because I was bringing back CDs, loads and things as well. So fast forward and I started to research more and more. I'm just a really curious person. And when something catches my curiosity, I just keep going and going. Um, so I started to find some newspaper uh, or magazine interviews online and other places. And that was the first step of this idea that I could create a collection of lost interviews of Iceberg Swim and that I would be helping out people who wanted to know more about this uh, figure who was very mysterious, almost mythical, legendary. And I also came across someone who was, who knew Misty eventually and I'm not sure if I'll mention him here because I've not asked his permission. So uh, thank you if you're watching. Um, I will certainly ask if I can mention him in, in future videos, but I, I won't do without his permission. But we connected up and I interviewed Misty. To be fair, he's, he's probably left out a few things which could have, could have been put into the book um, that would have been also unbelievable. Just some things which, for example, seemed unbelievable. One in particular was his escape from prison. I wasn't able to find anything on that uh, for a long time. So just because there's no record of it doesn't mean it doesn't exist because even now there's a lot of records still being digitized. 
and will come online in, in digital format over the next period of years. So there's probably a lot of information uh, still out there that, that will be accessible in future. So that, that's going to be very interesting. So one thing, like I say, was this prison escape, uh, which he later was punished and put in the steel casket for because he wouldn't snitch on himself, basically. He wouldn't say to the warden how he had escaped, which was humiliating for the warden of the prison. And one thing I came across was a newspaper clipping, which is in the Lost Interviews book too. And that actually says uh, something like escaped convict found could be a mistake or sorry could be a case of mistaken identity which is so typical of slim just uh, messing with the truth trying to pull the con again um, to get out of the fix but um, so even that which seems a little bit of a stretch has been proven true and then later I was able to come across um, Diane Beck, his widow, and she showed me a lot of photos, many of which aren't public. Um, everything from, you know, like Pepper, the character in his book, to um, the letter uh, that he wrote to the warden, um, which is published in the Lost Interviews book too. And so uh, we also have the FBI uh, records the even interview with the prison shrink um, in which he's trying to pull the con on on the prison uh, authorities about uh, how he should be uh, treated and kind of contact he should have with people outside um, so anyway I just thought I'd share that with you uh, eventually um, we published the second Lost Interviews book and that's done very very well. Uh, people also ask me often which book to get first. I would actually recommend the second book first. Uh, it's got stuff on Baby Bell and again that was like a larger than life figure and he actually was a large uh, well set person who did blow his own brains out in the park and um, that was because I believe that uh, he found out that he had cancer and so he didn't want to go out like a sucker he wanted to uh, go out in a way he chose that he had control over um, and you know ego reputation and how he was looked upon was was very important to him uh, he, he did some crazy stuff we always say like uh, reality beats fiction any day you know reality is more incredible than fiction when especially when it comes to iceberg slim that is one stretch that that he was living in the penthouse atop a a building and that wasn't actually true he was living in a apartment but um everything else was was virtually true Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm really interested to learn about your stories of how you got to know Iceberg Slim, of how you felt when you were reading the book. It just blew me away, literally blew me away. And I didn't know what to think. I was like, this is too incredible. So um, let me know below in the comments and ask me any questions. Perhaps I can ask, answer them in the next video.